Good morning, Internet. Um, yes, it's um, back to Northern in the UK. We had a couple of nice days and now we're back to... <sighs> again. Um, yeah, I might need to put something on. It's a bit, uh, bit cool. Um, got a problem with the S3, unfortunately. Um, been an ultra-reliable car. This has never caused me really any problem apart from general maintenance and the stuff we put on here, uh, which has never been that major. Um, but let me show you something. Um, bear with me. So basically, down to the unique way that uh, road maintenance is funded here, um, there's a place called Spalding not far away from me, and uh, there's a bridge there that goes over a river, and a couple of days ago, went over this bridge, and there's an almighty drop on the other side. Um, the road has basically collapsed. Um, now, the car is lowered, um, but as you can see, that wheel is quite far out the arch. Looks almost standard. That one is about where it should be. Okay. Um, we go around the other side. Excuse the gravel crunching. That's better. We're on the block paving now. That one is pretty much where it should be as well. But this one, yeah. There was a bit of a bang from this corner. So, there you go. Therein lies the problem. This is going to be expensive. Right, let's get some uh, prices drawn up. Several days later. So, uh, good morning internet. Um, now the next two videos are going to seem a bit disjointed, and I'll tell you why. Um, so, what happened is, um, I had a road spring break, uh, but the KW's on this, and to order the parts is a little bit of a lengthy process. You can't get them at your local motor factors, and the bank holiday was in there as well. So still waiting for those to turn up, which may be later today um, but one thing that came up on the MOT last time is the CV boot so while I'm in there taking suspension units off because I'm going to do both sides it's, it's pointless changing one you've got to do both road springs at, at, at the front in this case um, so I'm going to change those um, but I'm going to while I'm in there as well change the CV boot and get that done as well so again these two videos are going to be a bit disjointed but bear with me so this was obviously the original problem. We've got a broken spring up there. Like I say, I've got two on order. Um, I'm hoping they're going to be here today. Um, but on the other side, um, the CV boot has gone. So what I've got to do is, I'm going to take the suspension units out anyway. Um, I've got it blocked up on this side already and got an axle jack under there as well. I'm going to do the other side. Um, we chopped up at the back, so don't worry. Um, and start stripping things down. And um, I've got to take this scuttle panel off so it means the wipers have got to come off as well I know it's crazy isn't it um, so it's wipers off panel off um, look at getting the suspension units out and then on this side um, obviously get the wheel off and uh, we'll get that CV boot changed at the same time because you can see we've got a bit of oil splatter or a bit of grease splatter so um, yeah two jobs in one right let's get on with it tool I've had for a while and never really used is a universal wiper arm puller so uh, <laughs> let's see if it works well I think my conclusion to this is um, well, the first one came off okay. It <laughs> just wiggled off. This one, though, she's being stubborn. Yeah, there you go, finally. Oh. It's only been about a year since I had a new windscreen fitted as well, so I'm surprised that was so tight. Right, it's off. And panel off. He says. <laughs> go on, my beauty. Yeah, the sprayers are on the bottom. Um, I might move those on for now. 
I don't see the need to take them off. I've only got to get into, let me show you, I've only got to get into there to drop the strut off. So yeah, I might just leave that as it is. So I did pop it off after all. All you've got to do is just pop those up, twist them and they feed through. So it was easy enough. Uh, yeah, it's looking a bit crusty in there. That needs a clean before it goes back together. Right, the job in hand. Um, so it's jacked up already on this side. So just got to get the other side jacked up and uh, start making progress. So wheels off um, and look, oh, I've got the spring there. It isn't broken. So I've got to get the caliper off now. Um, two big bolts there. I think they're about 22 or something around there. Bigger than 19. 20 or 22. So we'll get those two top and bottom off. The whole caliper then will slide out. One down. And she's free. Right, next job, that knuckle joint off there. And that magic number is 16. And yeah, you can't get into that one. 16 spanner required. Ah, a bit of leverage. Now I'm just thinking in hindsight, I could use the brake to hold this <laughs> while I take that off. I'm going to try the Ugga Dugga gun in hope that I may have made a bit of a fundamental error here. Bear with. Alright, wish me luck. Boom! <laughs> Thank you. Your luck helped. So, sway bar's turning. I just hope it's got a spanner slot on it. Some do, some don't. Ah, bonus. Yeah, there's a stroke of look. Some of these, as I say, some have spanner slots on them and some don't. And the ones that don't are an absolute pig to work on. That track rod end bolt looks decidedly crusty. I think that could cause me problems. Yep, problems are ahead. want to but if I haven't got to take it off as well it's not worth destroying it because it's perfectly fine and it's only worth destroying it to get it off but I think I might have enough movement once I get those bottom joints off to swing it out and do it without removing it so I think that is a plan of action right I might just to make things easier as well take the disc off because these are big old beasties and they're a bit heavy T30 on that one, if you're interested. Mmm, look, pretty. No, not really. <laughs> right, so, the next plan of action. I think, let the tension off that spring. See if I can take the leg out 
and drop that at the same time. Um, yeah, I think I can do it. I think I can get enough movement without taking that tie rod end off to actually get it out. So, uh, right, let's go. Just in case you can't see what I'm doing. So that's the collet ring that holds the uh, coil over in place. All I'm doing now is winding the tension off it. And that is the good thing with coil overs because rather than having a spring twang off that you've compressed and hit in the face, you just let the pressure off them. Like that. There you go, all the way off. And now, the spring's loose. Perfect. Right, do I want to take that guard off? For the sake of a few bolts. Yeah, probably do. need to do now is um, move that axle stand. Uh, that gives me a little bit more movement on there now. Okay that's off. Um, I called it the brake bias lever. I'm wondering now if it's to do with the um, headlights, adaptive headlights. Could be, who knows. Um, it's off anyway. <laughs> right, let's, um, let's get this bottom joint off and then see where that leaves us. Okay, we're out. So in theory now, should be able to, a little bit of pressure, there you go. That's one of the things I wanted out. Look how crusty that is. Not good. I can get to that boot without messing about too much, which is good. Um, now, I had these of old. You used to be able to put the bolt in there and pop the CV joint off that way. So, do air these of new do that? I'm not feeling any resistance as yet. There is some there. It used to be a really good trick with it this many years ago. You just wind it out by hand and the CV join pops straight off. But I'm not so sure on this one. <laughs> right, it might just be the old hammer trick. Okay, but we're getting somewhere. Um, so that's off. I'm not going to change the boot quite yet. I'm going to get this strut off which means taking it off at the top first and then dropping it off at this joint here. Um, as I say, two birds with one stone this job. So uh, yeah, it's going to look a bit disjointed, but believe me, it all kind of makes sense in the end. So these three bolts have got to come out to let the suspension drop. So these three out after I've taken the big one out at the bottom and then we should be able to get the leg out and then I'll do the other side and then pretty much it's Everything's ready and waiting for the new springs. Okay. Next snag. <clears throat> that captive nut up there is no longer captive. It's just spinning. I'm not even sure it's actually got a nut on it. It just seems like a stud. Ah oh dear. Well, a quick status update. To be honest, I've bet enough. So if it wasn't for the fact I've got to get this out, this strut, I would have probably been done the CV joint by now. But what's happened is the captive nut at the top there is just spinning and it's jammed up and I can't get it to move. Um, whatever clown put these coilovers in um, has rounded that bolt off. So this is getting more difficult by the day. So I think what I'm going to have to do is try and drop this down. I can't get that bolt out on the end of the tie rod end there. Um, obviously can't get that one out 
because the clown's rounded off the uh, the bolt in there. I can't get the bloody coil over off. <sighs> but I'll get the CV boot off, that's alright. <laughs> oh, you've got to have a sense of humour, haven't you? Right, let's battle on. I'm not going to record much of this because, to be honest, it's going to be long boring. Uh, I'm getting a bit peeved and I'm cold and I want it finished. Well, this will not budge. It's starting to look like the only options available to me. It's grinding it off. Which I'm not happy about, I'll be honest. Well, it's off thanks to an angled hacksaw and a bit of brute force. <sighs> not good. So that was the little bolt that was stuck. And that's be strut. So it does look like I can get enough leverage on it to um, undo the top, take the spring out and change it. Um, that's where that bolt was. Yeah. Um, looking at these, those ones have proper captive bits in them. That one, mm, it does. But uh, yeah, not impressed. Um, I think it's metal underneath covered in rubber so uh, yeah hopefully with a little bit of persuasion I can do something better than the, than what's on there. Right, um, I think now CV joint. Um, I might This has been a nightmare, don't mind saying. So yeah, uh, as you can see that boot is uh, split at the back. It's unfortunate, I don't think that's a very old one either. I'm pretty sure I had it done when I had um, the gearbox done. But anyway, there you go. Right, um, now I'm gonna peel back that gator. Oh, look at that crusty old thing. <laughs> that might need to clean it before it goes back. So I'm gonna peel that back, give the CV joint a bit of a tap and that should pop straight off. So you get the CV joints off and then get the little washer and spacer off that fits in there and then just give your CV boot a bit of a pull and off she pops and you can see there that's where it's split. So that's slightly annoying because yeah that is a relatively new one. Um, but uh, well such is life right I'm going to clean that up and then put the new boot on and uh, pack plenty of grease in it put it all back together again. There you go, new boots on, give it a thing a little bit of a clean up and uh, that shaft there looks relatively new. So you'll get these with the kit and um, don't think of throwing them away and um, basically putting Jubilee clips in the place because these are the best things you can have. All you need is a little five pound tool off eBay to crimp them up and basically it just goes on there like that, you crimp them together and jobs are good. Uh, and I'm going to do it with two hands off camera so take my word for it. So there you go, it's on, they don't need much, just pinching up, um, it's just to hold it in, in place really, so it doesn't need to be mega tight, it just needs to be there. Right, let's get everything back together. And of course, don't forget to pack your CV joint with loads of grease. Yes, there's loads in there at the moment, but you get grease that comes with a boot, use it. You need plenty of grease in there, believe me. And there you go, new boots on. Um, what I tend to do, I, I'm not sure if it makes any difference, but I do these opposite sides, just in case it affects the balance in any way. I can't imagine it would for a second, but there you go. Right, I'm going to give it a good clean up in here, and I might have to call it a day because the springs are not here yet. So I guess it's going to be uh, another job for tomorrow, but um, there you go, that's the CV joint done anyway. Well, after what has been a bit of a crap day I'll be honest certainly with the other side caused me loads of problems um, this side came apart pretty easy uh, this is the broken side obviously and this is the spring so there you go that is completely and utterly trashed um, yeah fractured completely not good um, at the moment all I'm doing is cleaning things up and the ball race was a little bit um, graunchy well a bit crappy with old grease and stuff like that so I've just give it a good bath in uh, penetrating oil and give it a good wash out now and then I shall repack it with grease again make that nice and smooth and of course I'll do that on the other side as well but I'm still waiting for the springs it's um, getting on for three o'clock and the springs haven't turned up so yeah this is gonna be um, well not finished today let's put it that way 
Right, more cleaning. Well, I'll be honest, it's been a day. <laughs> And that's about as far as I can go today. Um, so again, it's going to be a part two, I'm afraid. Um, but there you go, such is life. Something else to look at tomorrow for you. Uh, or when they get it edited, whenever that may be. But uh, thanks for joining me today. And um, see you soon with a fixed S3. Oh, and I almost forgot. Everybody loves a comparison. One good spring, but a little rusty. Um, and one not so good spring. Oh.